The best heavy tanks in World of Tanks console is what we're after today in today's video and of course we're following on from part one of this video series in which we are looking at all of the heavy tanks between tiers 5 and 10 and which the top five vehicles are at each tier so be sure to check out part one which looks at tiers 5 to 6 and of course today's video is going to be looking at tiers 7 to tiers 8 so we've got loads of different vehicles that we're going to cover in today's video 10 to be precise where we're going to give a little bit of an in-depth explanation as to which vehicles are the best in the game and give you some premium tanks that maybe you'd want to purchase as well as tech tree alternatives that won't cost you any money so first things first let's look at tier 7 following on from tier 6 and of course this looks at the t29 which is the easiest and in no particular order as to which one is the best this is certainly one of the most all-round heavy tanks at tier 7 because it offers not only the fact that you have a fantastic turret but also the fact that you have a fantastic gun you also have decent mobility you also have a uh, great uh, kind of general statistics about the vehicle as well in terms of your hit points your vision range not awful and so it makes the t29 one of the best all-round heavy tanks in the game if not uh, it, it is the best tier 7 heavy tank um, at least in my opinion it can certainly be a carrier of games and that is what you want within a heavy tank because this i believe is the uh, one of two of my Colobanos medals that I've got is was within this vehicle, um, and that of course uh, was a true Colobanos medal. None of this getting in the cap circle against five opponents and winning that way. I'm talking about actually removing five vehicles on your own. But the T29 itself, what makes it so special? Well, it is the penetration values for this tier seven, uh, the damage, and of course uh, the consistency of that turret armor, as you can see here on screen we have this perfect kind of hold down monster which when you factor in it has 10 degrees of gun depression makes this tank a bit of a ridgeline warrior and if you can get into that sort of position then you're going to have a field day mowing down your opponents using the really good gun handling as you can see here 0.32 accuracy without a commander i believe in the vehicle and i think we do have some of the uh, accuracy bonuses uh, in the form of gun stabilizer loader and of course um, with coated optics or advanced optics as it's now commonly known and of course usa if we put a commander in it we can get a, a feel for what the tank is actually like with kind of all of the boosts that you can put onto it and of course 486 meters vision range is pretty good for a tier 7 heavy tank uh, which means that most of the time if you do get hit you're going to be able to spot the opponent that spots you and also with the fact that this tank as a tier 7 heavy has better dpm than some tier 8 mediums in the game because why wouldn't you want a tier 7 heavy that has armor and can go 35 kilometers an hour and stuff like that have the similar if not better dpms to a tier above which is supposed to have better guns but yeah this tank is certainly not something you want to sit in front of for any lengthy period of time especially if it's a uh, hold down and you can't see the turret and that is where the T29 is just an absolute monster and why you potentially want to pick this tank up. And then kind of following suit, we then have the Minuteman, which is essentially a premium version of the T29. And this is included within the same tank. We're not going to have two of the same tank, essentially. But ultimately, this one is even better because it gets spaced armor on the side of the turret, which makes it even harder for people to be able to hit, especially when using gun depression. Um, it means that even over the side, a lot of the times they won't be able to hit the cupola, which is a weak point, uh, whereas the standard T29 would be able to. It's also get really annoying blocks of spaced armor on the upper plate, which make it difficult uh, if you kind of auto aiming or like when you think that you would just automatically pen and then you end up bouncing because there's just a thick piece of spaced armor and then of course on the side they just gave it a ton of spaced armor again because why would you make a already very very strong premium uh, tech tree tank even better call it a premium give it a silver boost earn uh, because i believe that this gets 35 percent yes it does um and of course there are a few differences but they are very very minor and you can see basically it's the same tank other than the fact of maybe having 
a slightly less hit points and yeah i found the minuteman t29 a very powerful uh, premium tier 7 heavy tank now Moving on, we then have the next bunch of heavy tanks that we'll be talking about, and of course it comes is no surprise in the Hammer, the Tiger 131, the Tiger 1, and essentially all of the Tiger variants since they are very, very powerful, probably because Wargaming know that this is an iconic vehicle within World of Tanks console, and so want to make these vehicles very, very good, so that people don't have, when they choose their first tank, which is probably going to be the Tiger, or something like the M4 Sherman line, they want to make them good, which is why the Hammer is probably very, very powerful. The Tiger 131 is very, very powerful, along with the Tech Tree alternative, just the Tiger 1. Now, the Hammer itself is probably one of the best of the lot, but the ultimate weapon, in my opinion, is the Tiger 131, which essentially is a premium spammer, but if you do fire premium in this thing, it becomes outrageously good, because it has like an unbelievable amount of damage per minute and that's where the tigers come into fashion and you can see here the tiger uh, or the hammer has two and a half thousand dpm which is more than the t29 it doesn't get the turret armor that t29 has um, but it has that damage per minute the accuracy is even better than the t29 and yeah remember these are coming up against medium tanks that have 500 less dpm than them and of course, you usually have about 1.25 times less hit points on the vehicles and of course, a lot less armor as well as probably being nearly the same speed as the hammer, which can go 40 kilometers an hour. So yeah, you then compare that to the Tiger 131, which of course gets an extra 300 DPM, means that it reloads in 4.65 seconds and has basically the same hit points so yeah the vehicles like the hammer the tiger 131 and the tiger 1 are superb heavy tanks at tier 7 and probably some of the best heavies um, that i've played at this tier um, i don't usually play heavy tanks at this tier but they are definitely some of the best down there and then moving on we then have the Dreadnought KV-2, and it cannot be uh, dismissed as one of the best heavy tanks in my opinion at tier 7 because of the fact that this is a KV-2, which was amazing in the first place. I super enjoyed playing the KV-2. It wasn't the most competitive vehicle that could reliably do a ton of damage, but it was super fun. Um, and the Dreadnought KV-2 is basically a reliable version of the super fun tank that you know as the KV-2 because it has 250 millimeters of heat penetration which for most people there's no reason you would fire the standard ammunition because not only does the heat ammunition get far higher pen actually 75 millimeters more pen so you go from 175 to 250 which means you can pen everything you come up against and it comes up against tier nines of course uh, and then of course it gets increased speed of the round as well. So not only do you get more penetration, better speed, more reliable. Um, yeah, you can basically pen everything with the Dreadnought KV-2. And then you have the HE round, which you can swap if you really want to. And you could even make the argument of you using advanced reload, allowing you to swap between HE and uh, heat ammunition without costing you the reload, making this tank even more of a threat if someone knows what they're doing and they're picking the right vehicle to come up against. And don't forget, the Dreadnought KV-2 is faster than the traditional KV-2 and can go 37 kilometers an hour, meaning that this is a fast super mobile in terms of like a, a traditional kv2 and of course it gets a fairly decent amount of view range if you buff it up with some of the perks and yeah not awful accuracy either you'd be thinking oh does it have like 0.7 accuracy no it has 0.53 and that's without any of the commander perks so we'll put those in to see what reliable uh, kind of uh, accuracy you do have with the dreadnought and ultimately it's a heavy tank and in the traditional sense where you're poking around corners against other heavy tanks so you don't really need like super sniper accuracy but with 0.44 accuracy on a 750 or 700 alpha damage gun at tier 7 you don't need to worry and that's why the dreadnought kv2 is so much fun and why i absolutely love 
playing this thing and I'm sure anyone that's played it probably has a similar sort of impression of it just being a really fun vehicle and also very very consistent because all you have to do is five shells of damage in the game to get three and a half thousand damage so yeah really really nice one and I super super recommend it to everyone uh, who plays World of Tanks uh, console but moving on what else do we have well we do have the IS and this is another vehicle that I found really really fun to play as well as being uh, something slightly different to what you'd see with some of the other vehicles now you see the T29 the Tiger they're kind of heavily emphasized on damage per minute whereas the IS is the harder hitting vehicle and it means that if you know how to trade with opponents whereby you know you're only taking one hit for every shell that you dish out you can almost double the amount of damage that you're dealing to them as you are receiving so you're ending up with a damage caused slash received of like two if you literally just trade one for one with someone on a corner now that is not where the is necessarily excels although it is one of the kind of best bits about the tank it's also the fact that you know you're fairly fast you're 37 kilometers an hour you have that big gun you've got a decent chunk of hit points significantly lower than the tigers um but yeah overall this tank is kind of like an all-rounder but has that big heavy hitting gun with decent damage per minute for a heavy tank remember as we're talking about seems like wargaming got the damage per minute wrong with these tier 7 heavies throughout the board especially when you consider them to the tier 7 mediums which literally most of them have a far lower damage per minute than these tanks um yeah it's, i don't know what they were thinking um but the is there one of my favorites hence why i actually went ahead and three marked it and probably because it was a good one we can actually have a look at whether how many games i actually played in the is i'm sure it's somewhere like 138 so i played this uh, back in the day a long time ago when i played um, and of course i tried to revisit it maybe we'll even go for the fourth mark as we're at 99 percent on the damage standing so yeah maybe one good game could end up pushing us over the mark to the fourth mark of excellence and the gold marks on the is either way really really did enjoy playing the is and i highly recommend it to pretty much everyone who is playing world of tanks and it's free so you don't have to pay anything for it anyway the next heavy it's probably gonna be well i already know that it's gonna uh, trigger some people and it is the amx um m445 and it's because this tank is like a really weird vehicle that i feel like most people uh, kind of underestimate within the game because it has this superb gun and like it is like almost like a french tiger in terms of its accuracy but it also gets this 300 alpha damage shell and it means that you reload in about nine seconds somewhere in that region which is pretty good uh, without any of the boosts without any equipment and if we put equipment in it which we're going to do now uh, we'll put advanced optics and then put some vents in there i mean you could make it even faster because this tank is no slouch and you can certainly mobilize yourself around the battlefield but with it fully set up you can see here we've got a 6.59 second reload to do 240 alpha damage so it's kind of similar to a tiger in that essence but i feel like the arm model is slightly better you're probably more reliable to bounce rounds with this thing than you will in a tiger um, and i feel like it's a little bit more versatile uh, slightly more mobile and yeah i just genuinely really enjoyed playing the tank is it necessarily overpowered or anything like that absolutely not but yeah it was a surprising tank as i thought it would be rubbish being a basic french vehicle that is supposedly got armor but doesn't really have any um, but yeah i really enjoyed playing it and i highly recommend you actually try it out give it a go yes you might not enjoy it but yeah it's um it's definitely an interesting one either way let's move on to tier eight now tier 8 is where it probably becomes the most diverse for the heavy tanks within world of tanks and there are a t absolute ton of heavy tanks at tier 8 that i love and i love playing and we're going to highlight a couple of them that i feel like are the stronger ones and some that maybe i found much like the amx m4 to be super surprising and really fun and rewarding to play in not necessarily the damage and the assistance that you might rack up but just the overall uh, kind of learning experience that you can get from some of these heavy tanks as well and how you can kind of uh, get better as a player so that when you jump into something that maybe is a little bit 
better, you will be well more equipped than maybe if you were just playing an overpowered tank all the way through. Uh, so yeah, you've definitely got to learn quite a bit within this game to uh, to kind of get to the top tiers, I guess, um, and be in the realms of being able to come top every game. But what vehicles are we on about and what type of vehicle will allow you to get better? Well, the first one is actually the T-34. And you can see I liked it enough to get three marks on it. And that's because I found this tank is... It's a very fine line between being useless and being very, very effective. And it's kind of where it's quite situational as to whether you can make this tank super good. And that's what allows you to kind of learn the different things that you might need to know about heavy tanks so that you end up in scenarios where you're in a very strong tank in the first place in a position that's really really strong for that tank and it makes it even better so when you're playing a tank like this that isn't necessarily the most op tank in the game and you're still being able to do well then yes the t-34 is uh, is definitely a great one to learn with and why is that well much like the t-29 the t-34 has amazing accuracy it has amazing uh, gun like statistics when firing on the move and because it's not the fastest vehicle although it did receive a buff since it was first released into the game allowing it to go 35 kilometers an hour which you could potentially run traction system in to boost up a little bit more um, either way it's an amazing one and I think that a lot of people underestimate it it has the turret armor that you'd expect from the American heavy tanks and so you can get uh, hold down you've also got 10 degrees of gun depression and the dpm doesn't suck as bad as it used to allowing you to have 2140 damage um, and of course being able to compete with some of the other tanks at this tier as a heavy tank yeah i found it to be pretty good and of course if you do use uh, the side scraping mechanics you can use the americans but there aren't the best side scrapers in the game uh, purely because people can pen the engine deck from the side um, and also the fact that uh, yeah they're not got particularly the biggest amount of armor on the sides either way um, but you do have the spaced armor which can absorb quite a bit but other than that the t-34 has just a brilliant way of kind of mixing a tank that isn't necessary it's, it's a very well balanced tank is essentially what i'm trying to say it has none of like no overpowered attributes uh, but definitely allows you to play in a way that will basically improve yourself and your game and that's why i really enjoyed it it definitely tests your skill and that is a tank that i like within the game rather than just a blatantly overpowered one steamrolling through opponents and Talking about a little bit of a steamroller, we'll move into the T-54E2, which is essentially one of two, well, I think there's even more now at this point, of the auto-loading 360 alpha damage uh, guns that you can get at tier 8, and that comes in the form of the T-54E2 and the T-77, both of which are really, really good vehicles, um, but the T-54E2 for me is the vehicle that takes the biscuit or takes the victory over the uh, over which one is the best, but you'd be okay to use either. But essentially, uh, the T54E2 has the autoloader. It is essentially a, a choice. You don't have to use the autoloader either. You can use the single shot, which has slightly better damage per minute and better accuracy. Uh, but there's no way I would choose the single shot over the autoloader in this thing because of the fact that, yes, you can smack out, I believe, uh, 1,080 damage with this thing very, very quickly. You've got a intricate reload 2.22 seconds, um, which is not bad for an autoloader. Um, and it's certainly nothing like a, a four second intraclip that you might see on the medium tank that they've just released in World of Tanks, uh, the kind of AMBT type thing. Um, but yeah, uh, either way, damage per minute of the tank kind of sucks, uh, but it is an autoloader, so it's effective damage per minute. And it can chunk away a lot of the opponents that you'll be facing. It also gets a decent amount of armor. Yes, it has that big cupola on the top, but the cupola isn't the worst in the game, and it's certainly way better than the the T-77 that you can also pick up within World of Tanks and that is why I feel like the T-54E2 is just a very very strong one and of course it can go 45 kilometers an hour so it's no slug or slouch uh, it has good vision range as well 456 meters uh, and 
and that if we actually put on uh, and a commander can be boosted even further uh, I don't know whether we can <laughs> pop a commander in it but here you go 510 meters view range on a heavy tank at tier 8 yeah it's uh, it's a pretty decent one for getting spotting and damage at the same time and yeah it just is a really really big help for your team and I don't think it's the most expensive heavy tank either uh, in terms of buying it uh, with gold but yeah either way T5042 is the second on the list and a very very good uh, premium heavy tank at tier 8. Then what else do we have? Well, we have a variety of other tanks at this tier that are very, very good, but there can be none other than the Tiger II, and I, I don't even know. This is undoubtedly, in my opinion, my favourite tier 8 heavy tank because of the fact it has just everything. It has absolutely everything. It has the view range, it has the... Uh, damage per minute, it has the armor, it allows you to side scrape, it has mobility, it's just got everything and that is what makes this tank super super good. It even has 8 degrees of gun depression on this tank meaning that you can use ridge lines, it's not severely affected like a Soviet heavy tank might be um, and that's why I just love it and in general why I probably went and 3 marked it I believe probably just because I enjoyed it the most and I think it was the first one of the first marked three mark tanks I actually even went for way before I started uploading on YouTube a long 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 time ago uh, when I originally played this it was probably one of my first tier eights in the game in fact um, but either way Tiger 2 has remained just a king within the game and why I so, <laughs> I just love it and of course you've got variants of the Tiger 2 and the King Tiger and stuff like that uh, which I believe gets the stock turret of the uh, Tiger 2 so I don't know if it's the same I'm not entirely sure it might look like it um, uh, no I think it is the stock turret um, which I don't believe is as good uh, but you can see it here uh, in terms of the stock turret it's that bit above the gun mantle that is awful I believe from what I can remember i don't know if it's the same on this um but i guess we can have a quick look uh, i don't know maybe it is the same either way um the king tiger is just a slightly worse version in my opinion than the tiger 2 uh, which is why i'd pick the tiger 2 plus it doesn't cost you anything to use this over the tiger 2 itself uh, or the king tiger um, and i think the king tiger is like stupidly expensive for what it is either way tiger 2 fantastic tank and definitely on the list for the best heavy tanks at tier 8 and then it's time to move on into some of the other vehicles and I think we're going to have to stop on the Hydra. Now, the Hydra IS-6 is a vehicle that you may not have heard of if you haven't played World of Tanks console in a while, uh, but it is a tank that was released quite a while ago, and it's quite rare, and it is only available during uh, kind of exclusive events. Uh, I believe it's a Crimson vehicle, uh, from what I can remember, but essentially, much like the Ragnarok, it gets a 75% silver boost, and that is what makes the Hydra IS-6 unbelievably good because it has the statistics of the defender has 75% silver run probably in my opinion is a little bit more flexible than the defender they both have basically the exact same statistics I just enjoy the look of the Hydra as opposed to the Defender which is of course this tank right here and the Object 252U which is also the Defender as well so they're the same tank just this is the unskinned version um, and of course you can see the Hydra here uh, looking uh, slightly better in my opinion um, but ultimately armor wise they are very very similar the lower plate of the Hydra is slightly worse than that with what you'd see with the Defender you got 120 millimeters whereas the Defender has a uh, slightly better uh, lower plate in fact uh, quite a bit better I believe like 10 millimeters more but ultimately most people will pen the lower plate at this point in World of Tanks because they have a ridiculous pen on pretty much everything um, but Either way, slimmer profile, lower plate on the Hydra IS-6 makes it a little bit harder and people definitely bounce off this thing quite often, especially if you're moving side to side and stuff like that. Um, but either way, the Hydra IS-6 is a fantastic vehicle and they also uh, have the weak point above the top of the tank, which I believe is only 30 millimeters thick. So you can get penned uh, through the top of the vehicle quite easily if they get any angle uh, looking down onto this vehicle. But either way, 
yeah just an amazing vehicle and there's definitely something to be said for purchasing the uh, object 252u instead uh, or just the defender uh, instead whatever you prefer uh, they are fantastic vehicles and kind of the better of the lot yeah tier eight and now then thinking forward in terms of other vehicles that i've really enjoyed and there is some kind of there's kind of this region where it's like hmm i don't know whether you would go for these vehicles if you wanted the most overpowered but i really really did enjoy the vk 7501k and that is because this rear mounted tank actually has armor at tier 8 so that means that people cannot just auto aim you and get away with it they actually have to sit there and they have to aim at that big lower plate which granted is quite big but it is not necessarily that weak 160 millimeters at the lower plate meaning that people who do not aim properly will end up bouncing people who do aim right and have premium will most likely pen you but if you angle like this you use the uh, angling mechanics in the game you can increase the effective armor making it even difficult for people who are aiming to reliably pen this tank from the front using the lower plate uh, yes you do have the cupola on the turret which can be penned by anyone that has any decent level of aim and of course a fairly accurate tank uh, can pen that and they do trust me with playing the game but you have a really really good uh, main armament to allow uh, that you're kind of punching back at them 490 alpha damage it has shockingly bad damage per minute and in 1900 just under of course this is without commander so you can push that up even higher if we smack a, a commander in here just for argument's sake if we grab the motion one uh, you can see uh, it probably comes up slightly so you're looking at 2200 which isn't the worst case scenario uh, but it's nothing too special i've also gone with the fact of adding in the speed boost equipment to just make it a little bit more bearable gain an extra three kilometers an hour making it uh, somewhat more mobile and also allows you to turn quicker which is nice for if the yoloing light tanks come around because it is a traditional super heavy vehicle but a super heavy vehicle where the armor actually works and you can actually pump people back who are taking shots at you so the vk 7501k probably one of the lesser known vehicles in my opinion that is still very very performing well can perform in the game and it's certainly certainly much better than this vehicle right next to it which is the vk 1001p and of course the mower breaker as well either way the vk 7501k is a really nice one and i enjoyed playing this tank no end and I was very, very surprised when I did play it. So yeah, really, really nice one. Um, and that is kind of where the tier eights start uh, kind of becoming very kind of average, or at least not average, uh, but you get the same sort of stuff cropping up where they're very much the similar sort of play style until it comes to something like the Skoda T56, which is the last vehicle in this kind of list. And it is the Czechoslovakian tier 8 heavy tank that has the potential to deal 920 damage in one singular salvo. It is a double shot autoloader. So you get 460 damage twice. Obviously, no brain box, but 920 damage in total. Uh, 35 kilometers an hour. Pretty decent accuracy. Not the best damage per minute, but it's no kind of slouch in terms of that. And it's better than some vehicles that you can get in the game. And remember, this is a double pumper. So having good auto-loading uh, mechanics in the game, allowing this tank to become even better. And of course, you can look at nearly 2,500 DPM uh, in general to be able to use this tank. A 20-second reload for 920 damage. I will take that every single day of the week. And the arm model is also pretty good. Very, very solid, very slim lower plate, especially if they're above you, which most tanks will be because it's quite a low profile vehicle, making the shot on the lower plate slightly harder um, than you might see with some of the German tanks, which are quite tall. Uh, you've also got that Coppola, well, yes, that can be penned, but even the Coppola is very, very strong. It's got like, what, 170 millimeters on the front. And of course, when you're moving and turning and just being a nuisance uh, to be able to reliably pen that, you, you may end up missing or it just won't pen. Um, and that is where the Skoda T56 will punish you super hard. And remember, anyone that has any decent level of skill will just poke around, deal their two shots of damage and poke back around that corner that they came from and avoid taking any hits, which 
Of course, when you're dealing 920 damage can be devastating for the enemy team, and you can quite easily rack up 5,000 plus damage in this thing if you have a good game. And of course, it looks pretty cool with the skin that you can get as well. So not only is it a very good tank, but also one that doesn't look awful either. But either way, the Skoda T56 ends this list. There are countless other heavy tanks at tier eight that are super super good and we can look at things like the eradicator which i really enjoyed playing um things like the lerva is actually a very underrated tank uh, got things like the asterion which i really enjoyed playing um and then of course things like the nomad the som um and of course there's a whole host of them the minotaur stuff like that um but yeah overall those are kind of the ones that i enjoyed the most out of the ones i've played there might be some on the list that maybe you prefer some tech tree vehicles that you might have added in but i'd like to see what you guys think in the comment section down below so leave those there and of course if you haven't checked out the tier five and six um, and then vehicles that I've kind of listed in the same sort of format, then you can have a look at that video on the left hand side of the screen. And when the other video for the tier nine and the tier tens come out, the right hand side of the screen will showcase those. And hopefully uh, you guys did enjoy. If you did, please hit that like button as it massively helps out. And this does take a while to come up with. But other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.